Welcome to the King Abrams Show. What it be like, Dr. King? Oh, oh, sorry. Are we doing this? I was on Tinder. I was uh, trying to trying to you know, get something to happen tonight. You know what I mean? So <laughs> are you taking responsibility for us in the show five minutes late? That's it. That was me. It was, it was me. I'm like, you know, people tell me I should start using Bumble, but uh, I'm old school. You know, what are you going to do? Tinder, you know, Tinder's what I grew up with. <laughs> you know, the, it almost sounds like you're talking, speaking Chinese. Like I don't know, I don't, re I could barely remember OnlyFans the other day. I was trying to go, what's that thing that people go on? They get naked and OnlyFans. Yeah, that's it. You know what I'm trying to say? They got that Tinder and Twitter. I can't keep up. Keep up. I've I've never yeah. been on Snapchat. I've yeah, I do Instagram. Yeah, you got your account. You would be uh, you would be you, you'd be successful on all those platforms. Uh, look, yeah. So OnlyFans is uh, people are doing it to to sell content, you know, and and uh, you could produce some content, and I'm sure you have a a whole bunch of fans that are just waiting to give you money to see to see a glimpse. See, I got some like friends of mine that are willing to do that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Those people, those people, you take their money though through Venmo and Cash App. Like, don't give OnlyFans a cut, you know, but. Uh, but if you're if, if they're if they're your friends, yeah, just say hey, look, you know, twenty bucks, you can see these things. But um, on uh, uh, no OnlyFans, you would be successful, and you would also probably get lots of attention on Snapchat. Although uh, I've seen people use Snapchat to try to you know to, to for for sexual purposes, and uh, it seems to be con really time consuming. You know, like you're on it all the time. Uh, just, uh -huh. Dick pick after dick pick, you know. It's just yeah. Uh, well, dick, dick, you know, picks and porn stuffs uh, can be addictive. Yeah. So, yeah. but I hear that there's other stuff. I think you were somebody that was. You were telling me that they, like Donald Rawlings has a mm -hmm. legit podcast, right? You know, he's yeah. a comedian. He's always and he's on. He's stuff. on OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah, and he's on the OnlyFans. Right. And no, there's, a lot of people, there's a lot of people creating stuff on OnlyFans, but it's still primarily for selling pictures of your boobs. You know, I mean, really, that's what it comes down to. Yeah. The kind of pictures, the kind of th pictures and video that you can't share on regular social media. You know, like I, I like if you ever, right. if you ever browse Instagram, it's like people really push the limits of Instagram censorship. You know, it's mm. like. You know, Instagram's like, okay, you got to cover the nipple. And so they have like this little tiny, little tiny little spot covering the nipple to make yeah. it nipple. Well, if you want to see what the nipple looks like without that, go to their OnlyFans. Right. <laughs> well, I have some of those pictures, I that I pictures that I can't post. And uh, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what kind of wild mm -hmm. hair I get up my ass. I just, this year, to see if I can, you know, post some of that stuff or create an OnlyFans and Patreon and all these. If you do get a wild hair up your ass, definitely take a picture of that. Take, well. take a picture of that? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try whole not to get the camera thing. up my ass while I'm taking a picture yeah. of that. Yeah, you might need, some, you might need some, like a tripod or something. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, no, it's a, you know honestly, like you, you're 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 an attractive woman, and uh, and you've been open about the fact that you had some work done, uh, you know, in the past year or so, you know, and uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, you, you spent some money on them, you know, you want to show yeah. them off, you know, but you can't show them off everywhere. So this no. is a, it's an appropriate place that allows you to show them off. They uh, they check to make sure people are of the right age, and of course you don't have to charge, but you know why not, right? Like not say uh, you know here's give me ten bucks a month that you could see some extra extra you know content from me every. Like know? on paper that works, but I don't know how fulfilled I would be. <laughs> like yeah. just like whipping it out, collecting you know it's like pay monopoly, whip it out, collect five hundred. I don't know how it works. I'd, I'd rather, I got a You're feeling a, I'd rather do something else for my money. No, I but hear hey, you. I hear no you. judgment. I hear you on that. And, uh, but let me put it in business terms, all right? So, okay. you, and I, you and I have a, a, a sexual themed podcast. Uh, that you are pretty much the sole producer of, like you're spending money on it, right? Uh, okay. you're, spending, you're spending money on a sexual themed podcast. Well, if the money you spent on that podcast was earned, 
through this like revenue, then yeah, maybe that maybe it would kind of balance itself out in your own head, you know? Why? Because they're both like sexually related. Maybe that's one way to look at it. Or I just spend the money that I make doing the other stuff that I do to make money, <laughs> like run my business and things like that. Yeah, your business is probably <laughs> like it's working. Yeah, we'll your business like if probably... I ever get to where like if my business breaks, maybe I like flash a few tits for a few. There you go. Hey, a few your dimes. Business, your business is way more successful than uh, than, than yeah. most people's OnlyFans. You know? I, not... Yeah, right. Would be but, really you know, and given given that we explore sexuality and given you know it's it, it's it's you know it's a, it's a cool thing. So that's, I I I don't know what Donnell Rawlings is posting because I'm not paying for his OnlyFans account. Plus, I don't. Right. Want... You know what I mean? I don't want to see him. I don't want to see what he. I don't want to see him. Like if he's gonna post like some porn with him and his, one of his groupies, I don't want to see that. You know? But, right. Um, right. But, I would imagine. I think you were. Somebody was telling me that he's like it's it's basically his podcast, but the content is way racier. Yeah. So, so. maybe he's. Uh, maybe, maybe that's it. Maybe we save like like ten minutes of like really raunchy King Abram show, and we post that shit. <laughs> maybe, but, maybe we'll see. Like we'll hey. Down and dirty special episode. Down and dirty, OnlyFans exclusive. Uh, you know, going up to going up. But you know, you and I talk about so much that I, I can't imagine uh, we would really have to push some envelopes uh, to have some content that people would want to pay extra for. That sounds yeah. enticing. We should talk more about that. Yeah. How's your week been? It's How been are you and good. Sarah doing? You guys are pretty open. In yeah. your relationship, aren't you? Yeah, you're like two. You are, you know, it's, funny, it's funny about that because uh, we, technically speaking, all right, and I mean this in the in the just a strictly technical sense, we have what, an open relationship. Like, uh, yeah, I have never imposed a. Uh, uh, I, I've never asked her to be committed to me or exclusive with me. You know. Okay. And I've never offered to be exclusive with her. And, and however, yeah. functionally, functionally, we're pretty much uh, exclusive. exclusive. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 And that's, uh, you know. I've it's, been in a situation before. Yeah. Where it's just sort of the unsaid thing, you know, the exclusivity yeah. is just not addressed. And we have actually even, uh, we even talk about like, you know, like, hey, we should, we should, you know, Meet, meet somebody else or do this or do that. I was I was joking when I entered and said I was on Tinder. I was just a sure. gag to get us started. But uh, you know, uh, you know, we actually uh, you know, have conversations uh, frequently about you know things we 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 could do or should do, and, and we don't because we're, we're I don't know we're crazy in love with each other. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, you know when it comes down to it, I could spend my time getting to know somebody else. That I'm really not going to be all that invested in because she's kind of like a side piece, yeah. or I can just I can just spend the night with my uh, loving girlfriend. And uh, so, having a technically open relationship, we don't take advantage of it. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe if I go on the road again, uh, and I don't take Sarah with me, then that'll be where uh, you know that that aspect of our relationship comes into play. But you know, most That's of the time funny. I'm taking her on the road because I like her being with me. Is that weird? right? <laughs> but if you're on the road and the opportunity presents itself, then maybe you will, will see about that. Uh, yeah, or maybe you know, I think it, I mean, that's how I think there's a big difference. I feel like you know, I read this that we're going to cite an article. Um, there was a not an article, a study that was done, and there, and there are not very many studies done on the subject of people in open relationships. Right. Um, often that data gets sort of absorbed in other specific studies about non-consensual sex or other types of sex yeah. studies that really don't have anything to do with open relationship. Right. Yeah. And so um, I was in a similar relationship. I think it's I think these open relationships are always different for the 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 the, the male and the female. So for me, my mm -hmm. personal experience was sure I'm in an unlabeled um sort of unexclusive technically unexclusive mm -hmm. relationship nobody's made any promises but i think generally the way women are wired you know i, I, I at the time i only had eyes for him All right right because right? that's how we are generally um and then men on the other hand are more opportunists right when it comes to their penises so, you know yeah i think it's interesting because i i've um usually men uh, 
push the idea of having an open relationship, or at least like I want to still see other people. You know, I'm not going to commit. I want to still see other people. It's usually a male. It's it's stereotypically yeah. a male thing. You know, but the only two relationships, uh, successful uh, open relationships that I have ever been aware of, long term. I mean, you can be successful for like a month and then you break up. You know, I'm talking about like. I'm talking about long-term relationships. Uh, one was married; they were married for seven years. Another couple still married. Uh, the, the the successful open relationships that I've known have all been driven by the, the female, uh, the the, you know, the the woman wow. in the partnership. And uh, and in both cases, it was a woman who had a really strong sex drive, uh, but that was unmatched by her male partner. Like her male, her her partner just didn't want it as much as she did. And uh, and so like they came to agreement where they let her get it elsewhere, huh. but you know stayed in the partnership. And so and this is a successful relationship. Both of them, both there's two. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Now I've known, uh, I actually know a another friend of mine who is uh, married to two men, uh, and uh, and I don't know uh, I don't know about their sex drive or anything or uh, but. Uh, it's like a long-term committed uh, threesome, you know. They're, they're, they're kind of so it, it's it seems to work really well when it's initiated by the woman. Uh, and uh, when if it's initiated, see, men are just driven to cheat. So right. basically, even when uh, even when I, when I say, "Hey, baby, I want to I want to open a relationship. I want to see other people." If you agree to that, I'm still going to act like a cheating fool. Right, because you're still going to lie about it. it. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm not saying I'm I'm gonna, but I'm saying a lot. Of men, would. A lot of men will, will take a great situation like that and screw it up. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I know. Yeah, <laughs> I just, it's strange. I had there was another situation. Uh, well, I I have I, there's let's just say the thing I'm turned on by that most women are not turned on by, mm -hmm. and it and and him sort of talking to me about this particular thing would involve him admitting to cheating. Uh, not all, you know, cheating. Well, not other women. But he can't he can't bring himself, or couldn't bring himself rather to divulging that, even though I, I was inviting that information. It's like, you don't have to lie to me. But they, they he still lies. Yeah. yeah. It's like in his DNA. He's got it. He's, he's like, <laughs> I just don't feel it's comfortable like, telling you because right. I know you're going to it goes, it goes against all of a man's instinct to admit yeah, yeah, to one yeah. woman that he's banging another woman. Right, right. Even when you have permission, you know. Right. My girlfriend actually, uh, uh, she just assumes that I'm banging other people. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. uh, and I'm I think we all do. <laughs> we were just on uh, on the road, and I wanted to meet up with a friend of mine in Arizona. And uh, she's like, I don't really want to meet up with her. I'm like, why not? It's like, well, because you, you, because you were banging her when uh, and that one time you were on that trip. I'm like, no, I wasn't. She thought I was banging. You know, she just assumes that uh, that's the girl that I spent time with. And and, and granted, that's a good assumption, uh, <laughs> you know. But it's not a hundred percent. But uh, yeah, no, it was. Uh, it, it's just you know, sometimes they just assume when when it doesn't happen. You know? But uh, it's open relationships are tricky. They're hard to navigate. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you're talking about this article, uh, what's more common, uh, somebody just said open relationships, Dr. King. Uh, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Uh, no, I'm not sure where the question is, though. It's like, uh, do, you want, do, you, do you want a definition of an open relationship? or like, they just, Are they good or bad? Yeah. Uh, Apparently, healthcare professionals, sadly, uh, attach a stigma. So oh, I read something that there to be done. Yeah, there's a study done. Apparently, four percent of you know I can see the slide in the middle, but I I can't read. Four percent of relationships, um, based on this study, uh, yeah. are people that are in open relationships and okay. And like open one out of, and, and one out of forty six uh, presidents uh, confirmed to be in an open relationship. One out of forty six presidents. <laughs> yeah, I'll let you figure out which one was it. Um, <laughs> I'll give you a hint. It was one of our more recent brothers. <laughs> <laughs> was he the same color as the slide in the middle? Uh, red? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, not, no, actually, uh, you would, Trump? I'm, not, I'm not talking about Trump at all. I think he was, uh, Clinton. Clinton. Uh, Clinton. 
Yeah. Was that, would you consider that to be an open relationship? No, I think Hillary, she well, we never him. really heard from Hillary. Yeah, she let him, she, okay, so she let him cheat. She let him get blown. I mean, we know like that that's, that's public record, you know? And then, of course, there's rumors about them being swingers and things. But that's, Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look Always for them. Google, Google it. Uh, whoever it was, Deborah, who uh, made the comment, uh, Google uh, the Clintons at uh, swingers. So you'll, you'll be surprised. Clinton's no, they, swingers. And, uh, and uh, of course, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not suggesting anything that isn't already on the Internet. But, uh, but it's a matter of fact that he cheated uh, and she seemed, you know, was okay with it. Uh, and it's yeah. a matter of fact that that you know she he, he got oral sex at least from from you know an intern and she was I mean, over come on. Come on. So, if you were, i mean if i was the president yeah no, i would no. be definitely getting my share fair share of, of, course, of, course, of course but the the, the, yeah. the the only thing is I, and i was just making a dumb joke when i said one out of 46 presidents you know yeah. i uh, I'm probably sure it's more like 20 30 out of 46. yeah who knows i mean it's not surprising i think that's the point it's not surprising yeah. Um, you know, some of this research wasn't surprising at all. Four percent sounds about right, I guess, for the four percent that admitted. And then, um, bisexual uh, people reported more open relationships yeah. again, which makes it's, sense. It kind of makes sense, right? yeah, of course. Elderly people aren't swinging as much as younger people. And um, one, but one that's thing, because, yeah. oh, I wonder if that's because of lack of uh, of options or lack of desire. You know, there's two. Yeah, you know I mean, because as we get older, as as we get older, both of those things, uh, you know, decrease. You know, yeah. So, well, but, fortunate uh, um, was uh, something that I did learn from reading the study was that that there is a stigma. I mentioned it a second ago. There's mm -hmm. a stigma, and it's uh, sort of d rooted in the healthcare system. Apparently, when people that admit to being in open relationships seek medical care, especially around you know, sex issues or even in therapy, right, with counseling and that kind of thing, there's a stigma attached. And so they're not quite getting the right treatment. And another thing that's happening is that uh, clinicians are attaching depression to these people. So if you have a straight clinician, a psychologist, psychiatrist, who's seeing a couple or a person who happens to be in an open relationship, they're more prone to say this person is depressed or confused right. because it's not something yeah. they would subscribe to. How is that? Well, it's also, it, 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 there is that, but it's also true that, you know, it, it, you have to have some level of dissatisfaction with your primary partner to want to have, more, uh, other, you know, extramarital partners on, on a regular basis. Is that really you know? true though? I, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe for a woman, I think that's more common, but for men, he could have the greatest, Sex at home with the baddest bitch on the planet, and yeah, again, yeah. if the opportunity presents right, itself, right. he might slip. In, into there something. is there there is uh, a, an exception, and that's just uh, variety. You know, you you want something different. You want to feel a different body. You want to do that, but that's uh, th that's a little bit of a different drive. When I think of open relationship, I think of people that are in like long, uh, long term, you know, sort of ongoing uh, situations, as opposed to I just like to go out and cheat, get my freak right, on. Right, right, you right. Know? You know, my girl likes to go out and bang a basketball team once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty damn um, yeah, open now. Yeah, she's got well, you That's know, Seven like Eleven open. Yeah, I don't blame her, man. She's you know, go, go, go get the go get the different experience. Yeah, I know what I'm like. I would I'd be out there too. No, but I'm I'm. It's a joke. I'm not. But um, the, the the thing is, is like you know, there's a big difference between the desire to cheat and like wanting a partnership with somebody else. You know, like a, huh. like most open relationships, it's not about like just I'm just going to go have sex and come home. It's about I'm going to go out and spend time with somebody, get to know. Right. Somebody, you know. Uh, right. These people are choosing a, fr a friend, a third or fourth party to come yeah. be a friend. They're not necessarily going out and having illicit sexual experiences with strangers. Mm -hmm. The uh, that that's a boy, not a man. I like I like this, this. We have a listener named Jonathan who is commenting quite a bit, and uh, and he keeps adding these little tidbits uh, that are entertaining me. Like that's a boy, not a man. He's like, uh, I have no idea how you make that distinction. I hope that we're all we're talking about percent men because I would hate to think that we're talking about something statutory. Uh, you know, uh, there's a there's an age there's an age requirement. 
That's a different show. That sounds like a, a totally different show. Exactly. That's that's something that topic I don't want to get into. Uh, well, tonight, you ever, you ever seen an episode of Maury? I was just gonna say, you ever seen an episode of Maury? Yeah. So every almost every episode of Maury, and I don't even know if Maury's still on the air. This could be a way dated reference, but every episode mm -hmm. of Maury involved cheating. Somebody cheating on somebody. You know, mm. and uh, and I'm sure a lot of those uh, people are fake. They're probably improv actors, you know, because, uh, you know, we've all seen those auditions, you know, casting calls and things. But um, uh, if some of them, the storyline is so compelling that I'm like, why aren't you guys in like, just accept that you're in an op open relationship? You know, it's just like, it's just like he's right. I, yeah, I love trying. I've been seeing somebody, I've been seeing somebody become a Back, really, who you can see my girl's best friend, best right. friend, come yeah. I know they're dating, but I'm dating them too. I've been doing this for like six years. We've right. been seeing each other. like, then why not? Then why, why not, not just it? own it? I mean, yeah. you know, own it, be happy with it instead of ending up on Maury Povich, exactly. Just quit lying, uh, to, to people or continue lying to people, whatever works to keep you happy because you've been doing this for a long time. I, I don't get it, I really don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, I, it's, I, mean, I think that that stigma um, um, sort of spreads through, not just in the healthcare system. I feel like people feel like they sh they're not supposed to be doing that. Mm. And so they can't just own it, accept it, you know? Or maybe it's hotter because they're not supposed to be doing it, you know? Maybe. It's taboo. It's the taboo. You know? Taboo sex is good sex. <laughs> like, like John <laughs> Boys or boys versus men. No, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I want to bring our guest on tonight. Um, yeah. Always exciting to have a new guest on, um, especially someone that I already know. Uh, this next comedian, well, this next comedian, I'm talking like I'm on stage, like I'm going to bring him up on stage. <laughs> our guest tonight is a comedian. Um, and again, a, a very clever comedian. Um, it, this guy... <laughs> You'll see. He's the type. He's a certain type. Yeah. He's the kind of type. He's the kind of guy you don't you like. If you get in an argument with this man, you better have your ducks in order. You they better be all in a row. Um, I've seen him perform. He performs often at uh, Speak Live Comedy, which is an open mic that I host every Thursday night in North Hollywood. And uh, I don't know that I've ever seen him on stage apart from speak yeah we've gone out and you know each other on the marketplace but this guy's so Maybe. smart and um he looks and sounds like it you guys warm welcome for <laughs> keenan j floyd everybody welcome to the show. hey what's up hey <laughs> uh I'm thanks. what's up you're saying welcome Oh, thank you. Dr. Thank Brian you. King, King and Floyd. Nice to meet you, Dr. Yeah. Brian King. You hear that, that a lot. Don't look shocked. Like, uh, people say you're smart. You heard that. He looks yeah. smart. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the kind of, uh, it's the, uh, what do you call it? Um, the condensation, not the condensation, but the condescending. Condescension. So how you going to fuck up a word right after I tell everybody yeah. that you're smart? Right. Condescension. Uh, I'll let the glasses so fool you. I'm yeah. just hard of <laughs> Um, oh, oh, Mark, there's no lenses in those glasses. <laughs> Straight up, empty hammer. It's just for show. Uh, you know. Yeah, but, I um, I I was piggybacking off of what uh Brian was saying about Mori Povich, and the interesting thing about Mori Povich is it's so extravagant what people go through to find out that their kid isn't theirs or whatever, that I'm surprised that people are shocked when yeah. they actually get the news. <laughs> right. Like this, really be this could have been a conversation in the room. Yeah. Like we're literally on national TV. Like, do you know why you're here? I have no idea. What? Yeah. <laughs> why am I here? I have a beautiful family. You know, I, I'm happy in my life. My wife loves me. My child that I know is mine uh, loves me. They always say the same thing. <laughs> you gonna fly me out to Chicago and put me up in a hotel and, and tell me some uh, wonderful secret? Oh, I wonder if my man is proposing. Uh, yeah, no, that's just it's just it's amazing the blind uh, uh, ignorance that goes into that must go into being a yeah. guest on a show like that. <laughs> 
Yeah. If you get an invite to the Mari Poe show, well, back in the day when it was live, then you probably have a love child. Out probably. I mean, I mean, you live in Little Rock, Arkansas, for God's sake, <laughs> and now you're in Los Angeles. Yeah. I you ever know. get a call from I, if I ever get a, like a legit call from a producer on one of those shows, I'm just breaking with whoever I'm seeing at that moment. I'm just like, trying to, I, I'm not going on TV, and we're through. It's uh, over. It's not going to uh, end well. Um, so you've avoided the Mari Povich show. You've never. <laughs> yeah, yeah, never. Fortunately, I've never been on the Mari. No love children. No love children. Okay. That I know of, right? Um, yet, yet. I mean, you're still a candidate. I could change, you know, depending on if I move another tax bracket, but we'll <laughs> see. And then, open relationships. What say have you ever been close to having one or having one? Um, I dated, and for. For some reason, it, what's, what's interesting about it is that people have different definitions for different things. Um, because there was in a re about a year or so ago, I was in a relationship that I thought was a monogamous relationship, but the person I was with was still dating, right? Oh. And that's why I'm saying people have different definitions for different things. So she thought she was in an open relationship and you. Unconsensual, non-committed. Yeah, it was a non -co It was a non-committed -co relationship because there was no, there was no official wording to establish that we were exclusive. Right. And I didn't necessarily know that was a thing. That's something that I learned because mm. we were we were going on dates. You know, we were we were having sex. We were spending a lot of time with each other. And then one day it was okay. Well, there's this other guy that I like, so I'm going to go and date him now. And you know. And it was a surprise. I was just like, oh, okay, well, what, Ouch. whatever, I guess. Uh, but, whatever, I guess. But, yeah, but, 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 her, were you not? but what ended up happening later was that she came back. She she got in contact with me again. She broke up with the other guy, and we were talking. And, you know, we were going to hook it up and stuff a little bit after that. But then at that point, she was like, well, this needs to be an exclusive relationship. You need to establish that we we're together and all this stuff and all that stuff, right? And that's when I learned that for some people, an open relationship, you're in an open relationship until you say you're not. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not It's not just good enough that you go through the motion. Right. I'm not having sex with anybody else. I'm assuming you're not having sex with anyone else. We're going out and all that stuff. Apparently, that's not enough. To, to say, you have to use your words. You're nailing it down. Because I think a lot of women find themselves in non-consensual, non-committal relationships, meaning they didn't know that the other guy wasn't, the other side wasn't being exclusive. A lot of people, maybe I said women, but maybe a lot of people are, are, are in these relationships unknowingly. Well, the excuse is always, I didn't know. You didn't say anything. Yeah. Even when it's someone's actually actively cheating it but is it cheating until you've said if you really do I mean, communication I, is key well yeah. yeah i mean at this point at this point the definitions are so open it's you know it's a free-for-all i think all right let me, let me pose a question let me pose a question here okay so uh, you're talking about you're, you're dating and uh, and you don't know you're uh, not in a relationship until you find out you're not or something right. like that. So let me see. Well, let's just say you're dating. And you're you're at that level where you're like, hey, I'm gonna ask her out. I'm gonna ask her out. I'm gonna swipe right on him. So whatever, you know, male, female, whatever you prefer. Let's say yeah. You know, so you're, so you're open to dating anybody that comes your way. Somebody comes your way. You say, hey, can I get a date on Friday night? They say, yeah. And then the next day, somebody else comes your way and you say, oh, oh, I want to go out with this person, but I'm already busy Friday night. How about we go out Saturday night? So now you got two people locked into two different days. You know? and, uh, and that happens. Uh, you know, can, you know it, it just happens that Friday night you have a great day, you get it off. Saturday night you, you have a great day, you get it off. And you got two people that you, you're getting to know really well and you want to continue seeing both of them. At what point do you have the expectation that you're going to drop one of them, and uh, and and yeah, I mean, like there has to like at what point do you decide? Okay, I'm just going to like focus all my attention on on this single person. Here's or what I think. Here's do you have an energy? 
<laughs> you know? I think that anybody in a relationship is just going to, like you said, sort of go with the motions and go with the natural flow, right? You meet, you talk, you play around on each other's bodies and you enjoy each other. And until one of you steps up to the plate and says, hey, let's have a conversation, right? Where are we? You don't necessarily need levels, but you have to have those conversations. Otherwise, what are you doing? And then all bets are off, right? There, there are no rules. So is it cheating if they're seeing someone else? True, if they're seeing someone else, they should be transparent. But until you have that conversation, yeah, I mean, I, I think until the conversation happens, there's an assumption that you're both still dating around. You're just dating around. So I... So something needs to happen. Some, somebody needs to something. Right. Before, it, like, what I've appreciated was if there was actually a clear-cut conversation about... There was a clear-cut conversation where, well, I'm going to continue dating. Because some people right. do have that conversation. There's a lot of people that do have that conversation where it's not an open relationship per se. Right. Because I think by the definition that even that you two gave and other people give an open relationship is once you get into a committed relationship, but yeah. then you say, I also want to be open to Right. Or it starts like that in the dating well, phase. You can well, like start that. out. Yeah, if it's out and you're dating multiple people and you just happen to like them both or like them all. And you can't I don't want to decide. I like all these people I'm dating. You all know? right. And so you just but here, here's what I was getting at. Something needs to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, in order for me to sit down and initiate a conversation with you, Ken, let's just say we're dating, and I, something needs to happen. I'm not just going to sit down out of the blue for no reason and go, hey, so by the way, are we dating? Are we exclusive? Whatever. Something needs to happen. Something needs to click here in my heart. Like, I need to feel like I'm falling in love, mm -hmm. right? Everybody reacts differently. Um, and then, But if I feel like I'm having a milestone, that's when I'm going to say something to you. I'm in a relationship now. Everybody knows about but you know, peanut butter. The nickname for the guy that I'm saying, it's a non-committed relationship, okay? Uh, we're definitely in an open relationship. Um, but, uh, you know, my my ex came has, has come back into my life recently, and we're talking. I am not touching the ex. I have no plans of touching him anytime soon. I had the conversation. I talked to people and said, hey, listen, this is the possibility here. Right? Six months to a year, I'm like, you know, I'm in love with this man. You knew that. He knew that from the mm -hmm. very beginning. So what happened is the ex came back. If nothing happens, people just float along in this flow, and then feelings get hurt. Well, you're right. There is usually a conversation. And sometimes it's not even, it's not even we're in an exclusive relationship. Someone is like, yeah. well, I'm a jealous girlfriend. So just so you know, right, right. you know what I mean? Or I saw you with that girl. Or two with, with that girl. Came. There's always a conversation. Who's this bitch liking right. your post on Instagram? So, right. there's, so somebody always says something to basically stake their claim. Right. So I agree with you. Either the conversation should always come up yeah. to, to either or. I, and and I think for me that's the reason why it was thrown off. Where it was just like, oh, all of a sudden I'm just going to have another dude because I'm always slow. Well, somebody usually says something. Right, right. I mean, at that point she knew that was uh, news to you, so I, I think yeah. it was a little, you know, lacking in cool, if you will, for her to just bring that up. Well, I mean, it, it really only when, when she came back. It that's when it kind of became an issue because the conversation wasn't like it was before. The conversation wasn't, well, let's see where this goes. Let's get to know each other. It was, you can make a commitment now, but it's like, but I isn't the one that, you know what I mean? So, so, so you, so, so you feel like it, it becomes personal because you're like, well, right. I wasn't the one right. fucking around. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I think that she should have just been more transparent and just kind of come out of the field saying, hey, I'm going to end the relationship and date somebody else. She should have. Maybe let you know. I don't know. I tell you what, when I told him about it, that there was a new guy on the radar, he didn't like it. And I don't think he wanted to hear it. Do you even want to know it at that age? Oh, I, look. I think. But then it really comes down to open. It really comes down to whether I'm for whether I will be comfortable with open relationship. Right, right. I, I think. I. I as a man and for selfish reasons, I think a lot of men want to be able to be with whatever woman they want in the moment. 
right. um, but they don't necessarily want to. They don't necessarily want that to be an open relationship per se, but they want to be able to have a booklet of all passes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. They want the girlfriend experience without having a girlfriend. I have a girlfriend that says that to me all the time. They want the woman to be exclusive and them have and them to have the Well, it's just like uh, you know, a lot of celebrities that we know personally that you know comes on the news where it's like, oh, so and so cheated on his wife and blah blah blah. But like when it especially when it comes to like some comedians, we'll be like Oh, I thought that was I thought that was news. Why is this news? I thought this was a thing. Right. Because it's so a part of it's so a part of the culture that we well, me, I'm not saying you per se, but like me, I'm just like, oh, it's part of the culture. Mm-hmm. Because even when I go on the road for comedy stuff, there'll be women who come into the green room and they'll uh, and they'll say to comic, I know you're married. But you and I kick up, and I won't make a big deal about it. like like it's old a, PP. We've been singing about it yeah, since the late eighties. It, it, it's a part of the culture, so we're not even thinking about giving it. We're not thinking about calling it open relationship or anything right, like that. Right. Then when it gets into the meat, uh, it's well, Keenan Floyd is cheating on his pregnant wife and stuff. But we're just like, oh, I thought that was just <laughs> what do you think? So wait, we'd rather cheat than actually just admit to our openness. I think as a as a society, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like cheating is somehow more normal than having like, like a consensual was, open. Like, yeah, it's true. Like they straight up yeah. gave Jada. People are like <laughs> Jada yeah. get, didn't just straight fuck some dude and then admit it to yeah, that's that's on air. Yeah, that's actually I'm another uh, it, pretty well. Now, well, but but you see, that's this, this is my question because there's a lot of people. There's a lot of rich wives their husbands cheat. Yeah. Now there's now, a lot of broke wives that also yeah. know that their husbands so, cheat. So 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 this yeah. question is that, is, is that an open relationship? Or, if she allows it. Or are they just putting up with the bullshit? Because I think, I think there it's is a, a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. I think that as a woman in that position, you know, yeah, I mean most women know when they're with women and are stepping out. They just decide not to say anything and take it to the grave and hopefully they don't ruffle feathers and, and having a decent life being married. That's yeah. why we do that, because we know how men are. Some of us know how men are. Yes, we may have some jealous bones, but you know, these uh, whether you're rich or broke or whatever, this is what women go through. But it's a bit of both because you're accepting that this is what's happening. It's the thing you're doing when you have an open relationship. Um, I think in some cases, people have an open relationship because they know that their man is going to cheat. And so why even create a rule that's going to get broken and have some strife? And then there are a percentage of women who just are into wild shit sexually and want to go out with a man and, and do wild shit sexually. Um, and, and and listen, if that's whatever you choose, no judgment here. Well, well, also I think it, it might be a cultural thing too because I like for example, I lived in the Dominican Republic for ten years, and cheating, I guess, is a thing. But it's <laughs> it's I'm a man, so I fuck women. Okay, that's that's culturally speaking that's right. that's what you're it is straight man so you're active so to, so to women, so man. you have your wife and your wife has kids but you also have other women <laughs> period period like and it's i'm very difficult for a man to not have other women well yeah I, and <laughs> it's very difficult yeah, it's man. Man. Well, like it's harder for you guys to do that than us it is but it's also but it's also like it seems like a lot of in, in a lot of wives, Republic, it was a lot of wives and girlfriends put up with it, right? And that's because it. what the fuck are you gonna and do? And it's successful, yeah. So it's like what the fuck else are you gonna? Do? The wife and kids, and then the guy has other women, yeah. But no one's really talking about relaciones abiertas or open relationships. You know, what I mean, right? No one's no one's having that conversation. <laughs> it's oh, he's a man. He's doing what he eats do. rice and beans right. and fucks women. Boys will be boys. So, like I said, I, I I don't know how many other cultures are having these conversations versus just it's just happening. It's just a part of. Right. Nobody wants to own it. They just want it's like sweeping it under the rug. Cheating is like sweeping open relationships under the rug. What like the term to describe what's really happening. yeah. 
Well, 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 I think I think. So I actually, come, come, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I really think it's the other way around. Cheating is the more natural instinct. Uh, having an open relationship means to identify that I have these desires, you have these desires, and let's try to embrace them and not restrict each other. That's what an open relationship is. So the uh, open relationships are much more rare than mm -hmm. cheating, uh, and it's much less uh, socially acceptable than cheating. It gets more people because right. cheating is cheating is is the norm. Uh, but but being able to say you know I kind of do like to have sex with other people once in a while, and I don't want it to break my relationship up. You know, so let me be open uh, is is very rare. People have a hard time understanding that. This is my question. Do you think that when people start giving labels to things, mm. there's stigma that we as a culture n naturally go against it? Actually, I think the opposite is true. Uh, is I think that if you without the label, it confuses people and yeah. they don't know how to respond. So they need that label to at least be able to identify what they're looking at. You know, I, I think that's a slippery. I think I, I you know it's one of those things that could go anywhere. It depends on the individual. Right, like, like the healthcare professional who doesn't agree with open relationships, right? So you get a couple come to see them to treat some nasty case of Maria they caught out on the sh on these streets, right? Well, they're gonna get judgment. They're gonna get fault potentially faulty treatment or whatever they're gonna get when they get you know the reports say that that there's a stigma that's being felt. And then you get that same doctor to come in and treat a man who's married with a family and a white picket fence who had a wild night in Vegas and also caught gonorrhea. In my mind, I think the married guy who cheated is going to get the better treatment. Yeah, because he's going to get a high five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, 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 that's an interesting stigma, too. That's an interesting stigma, too, because that's the same stigma that happened back in the 80s with the AIDS epidemic. Because because it was associated with a particular lifestyle, yeah, right. So and it was a it was like a new disease, and people really didn't know how to treat it. So it's like you had these people that were dying, but instead of having a lot of empathy, it was well, it's this particular group of people right. that are getting it, and they yeah. should stop if they don't want to die, right? And engaging and, and behavior that's their that's their punishments, you know, yeah, right. Terrible. And that's the re and Brian, that's the reason why I was asking, do you think that the label is bringing that stigma back? Because when you start talking about like yeah. polyamory and pansexuality and that stuff, then it becomes part of that. And then people are like, well, Something to judge. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want this to be forced on our children or like whatever. Right, so then you right. kind of have this, this unbeknownst prejudice that people have because it's a, it's a direct label that this the group of people right. that they can pinpoint. Hey, those aren't the type of people. It's always about the kids. Let's yeah, go. I feel like that's how it is with the gay yeah. with the gay community. L B G T Q I A something plus, like it's yeah plus right. Um, I think it's ridiculous. The plus that we're for right? open. No. Yeah, plus stands for <laughs> open. <laughs> So I think it's funny. I think it's a peculiar that we're labeled as straight because I mean, you know what, you know that label is a label. That's a slippery one. I, I think some labels are essential. Brian, I understand where you're coming from, but when it comes to, no, I'm not saying I, th I I think they're essential. I'm just saying that most people feel comfortable with a label. With a like label. they want to know. Like they want to know. That's why. Like, okay, wait, so I have a kid. And, uh, you know, before she, my kid was born, the first question out of anybody's mouth is, uh, well, you know what's going to be, a boy or a girl? They need a label they so that they label. can help they can start create judging. the framework. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they need helps. a label so they can start judging. That's right. And it, it, it's, it's, all, it's all in how we process the world. You know, we need yeah. to know what you are, like, uh, what you are. We need to know what your race is. We need to know what your, you know... You know, how you identify and even if we are accepting in lots and lots of different types of labels you know create your own label that's fine but just tell me what it is so i know how i can relate to you and compartmentalize you in my tiny little brain and that's it's so strange yeah. I didn't, no label is sufficient i don't know if i'm fully straight it's not yeah. gay it ain't straight it's something it ain't gay i don't know what it is <laughs> yeah, but seat. you know what are you asking when you need to know about something you're saying okay yeah. what do you think about the last three or four seconds before you have an orgasm no right 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 
None of your fucking business. That's yep. what you're saying. Gay, straight. What you, What makes you calm? That's what you're asking. And uh, it's everyone gets religious all of a sudden when you start openly talking about it. everyone wants to talk about the kids and everything. So it's, what, when we talk about gay issues, well, because of the yeah. family, the family and the kid and the and the even though the husband's cheating, it, it, right. goes, it goes back to what you're talking about. The husband has. Plenty of other prospects in the world, and ask, and even the priest sometimes. Um, but when it comes actually openly talking about this label, then it's the issue. We have to protect everyone. We need to. He who is without sin shall cast the first stone. That is my philosophy. So, Everybody has got skeletons, gay or straight. You know, the kids, the kids, the family. Well, there's lots of <laughs> really successful gay families and gay yeah. children. <laughs> so, and I think yeah. there's, there's, there's plenty of people with successful relationships uh, who are, are functional relationships who are uh, open or just like willfully yeah. feeding or, or letting it right. happen, turning a blind eye. You know. Uh, I mean, like, you know, we mentioned some powerful, successful relationships earlier that, you know, could potentially fall into that category, you know? Uh, you can raise good kids. So, you know, you just don't put your kids in your bedroom no matter what you practice. Yeah, when you're doing mm -hmm. that wild, freaky shit. I am, I would like to make a confession. Go for I... it. This, this is the only chance. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Only <laughs> exclusive right here. <laughs> there we go. So I I am I believe um, in open relationships. I feel like if people were to be honest about their sexuality and what they really like and want, they there would be more of these. I am not a jealous person, and this is something that people when I tell you they just can't relate to me not being jealous. I was watching. Uh, the view the other day and the redhead joy whatever her name is joy be her she couldn't believe that oprah winfrey and gail had this fat have this fabulous long-term friendship and there's never been any jealousy like she was just like i'm not buying that and some people just aren't and i'm not like i'm not turned off by the idea of my guy sleeping with another woman in fact it, it in some ways is a turn on so i'm Definitely, definitely. Like, I would say, apart from my marriage, which was like me going that conventional route, I've always been in open relationships. Hmm. I, I don't think women, <laughs> I don't think women want to be with a man that one wants. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and that's why wedding rings. I don't know. I don't know. About, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Ring on, you're instantly more I think dressed. that's how you guys perceive it. So, like, when you see the guy walking in the room with all the flashy jewelry, you know, just popping out of the nice car, and so all these women sort of flock to him. I'm not even talking about that. Well, but... let's just as an example, let me start mm -hmm. up. So, so since so you see all these women, and then you know maybe he's married or not or whatever, and all these women. And so I think men sort of attach this idea that this man is wanted because all these other women want him. Like, I, I don't give a fuck who wants my man. Um, I just have to be attracted to him. I, I, I can't relate, but I'm also an odd duck, though. Well, yeah. well to, answer, to answer your question, well, to relate to that, okay. it's not necessarily, and I don't know how to explain it scientifically, but it's not necessarily flashiness. Like, when, I, like when I'm having sex on a regular basis, I get more attention from women and i'll just show up i'll just but could it be that you just you like it's doing well. something to your chemistry you're just happy yeah. it's right? chem it's it's chemistry you're happier or you're more satisfied yeah. you're more you know i mean it's a lot of guys it's a lot of it's yeah oh, you, sorry brian no i'm just saying guys that aren't getting laid or walking around grumpy all the time <laughs> you know? yeah that's yeah. what i feel like like i don't know if <laughs> Somebody else posted that on Facebook, and I thought I don't feel like that. Well, it, I, I, I think I just think it's, the, I think it's a lot. I think it's a measure of chemistry. I think there's you're getting it, you're getting attention. You're not desperate. You're not. You're you're more confident and stuff. I think it leads to a lot of, and I think people associate that. 
Like when Maybe. you when you walk in more confident, the assumption is, oh, you're getting late. All the ladies want me. I'm getting like he's getting a lot of ass. Mm -hmm. Well, but I don't know that the lot of ass is the part that women are attracted to. <laughs> well, no, I, I think I think it's the byproduct. I think there's an assumption. Ooh, I gotta get that me some of that. He's getting not all the ass, but he's getting There's some. I don't know. You know, we are we are very close to to, to the species that have like these family structures where there's one male and a whole lot of females. You know, and, and yeah. uh, maybe there's something to it. It's like, wow, look at the way he. Well, there's definitely you know something biological to it. You know, you know, you're a doctor, right? You know, a man's testicles notices a woman walking by before his frontal lobe does. <laughs> it's like yeah, occipital lobe. From the but, eyes to the balls and then back to so, the frontal lobe. <laughs> so the testicles are like this? Yeah. <laughs> the testicles are like, hey, it's and it's not really you'll figure out whether she's really test, cute or not um, later. Like, the testicles yeah. might notice, but they don't do the pointing. Uh, it's another no. part of the point. <laughs> yeah, I'm imagining testicles going like this. <laughs> pointing up like this. Um, <laughs> We're over time. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. No. Um, I say that when excitedly. Yeah, when the conversation it's a good thing. It means have fun. Yeah, I need to. When, when Sam and I start checking our watches and be like, "Oh, dude, we got it," you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I need to answer your question, though. I didn't answer the question right. about open relationships. Yeah. Um, the question is, I don't know. I have to present with the situation. Is it's it quite convenient. That you would present, though. Is it something that you would feel comfortable saying, hey, you know what? Uh, let's have an open relationship. Who? Me or Keenan? Either. It's questions for both. Yes, I would be comfortable. Yeah, I think I, I think <laughs> I would. I be, Well, <laughs> the reason I, I, I'm kind of hesitant because I've never been in that true. I've never been in that situation. Like, I've never, I haven't gotten... Because to keep in the context, when I was engaged, I was a Jehovah's Witness, mm. which Ooh. is a whole lot, lot of underlining or overhanging rules where that's not an option. So I would never, in that circumstance, right. I would never say that. Um, when it comes to, I, I, I think when it comes to someone that you're close to, I, I, it, it's going to depend on the person. You know what? Here's the thing. It's going to depend on the person. Women, I think there's probably more women on this planet that are cool with viewing. Somebody just commented in Devorah when I think just commented in what, what, how do you feel about watching your mate or knowing that your mate is getting pleasure from another person? I think, I think some women are into it. I think some women are okay with it and some women just can tolerate it because they know it's happening. The thought of, or man, the thought of their woman in bed with someone else is excruciating. I think in mm -hmm. general, I think there are more men who f would find that torture. Yeah, I, I so. Yeah, and, yeah. and so, um, and you know, it's all sort of relative because you know we're wired different, Dr. Branking. You know, the, the differences in the male female mm -hmm. brain and how we sort of, you know, our sexual yeah. mating habits as humans, right? It's all species are relative. Uh, I think that this open relationship thing, for the most part, is a is is beneficiary more to the man because he's the one that's going to be getting more ass. Like I said, most women are wired that when they're in love, right? Like, I, if I'm in love with you, that, you're all you're all I can think of. You're all I want to think about, right? When I'm, when I'm masturbating, that's who I think about. That's just me. Now everybody's different, right? There's everybody's different. Yeah, that's cool. just me. You, and so, yeah, as a woman, that is <laughs> okay. Uh, I just think about him. I see him alone, and so, like in my personal situation, I'm seeing this guy. It's not a serious relationship. If I decide that I'm going to start touching on this ex that's back in my life, then I have to stop seeing my current interest. Period. Because of I can't. I don't want to do both. I can't. Do you guys. okay? Because I, I, I can't split that energy. Okay. I, I was going to ask because he's open to it, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah, I can't be like fucking two dudes. You know, it just, it just like while while you were speaking, it just occurred to me like the saddest dude in in terms of relationships is the guy who pushes the open relationship onto his partner 
and then proceeds to not get any while his partner is out there, you know, having all kinds of having fun. A good time. Uh, like, I, he's just sitting there watching TV while she's going on date after date after date, you know, and he's like, damn it, I, I wanted this old relationship so I could get some sex. You know, so. Yeah. Sex oh, there's, there's a whole community of guys like that. I know, and they're all on my Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's end it like this. I think that you should have another show just about communication. Like sexual communication, it's an area, and I had a whole eight year marriage where let's just say one point was terrified to just even bring up the subject, and, and he's not alone. Okay, um, there are a lot of people that are afraid to bring this up because of potential judgment, or because I think a lot of guys feel like you know, if they bring certain stuff up, that the chick's gonna be turned off by him, or one of the partner one of the partners might use it against you later right right and that's not a good place to be so talk about that would you use against me later oh you know i mean can we have those i can have those hard conversations and they're not very hard yeah for me i mean that's just kind of crazy animal that i am but i think it's so important at out the gate for people to not only have already analyzed how they feel about you know their sexuality and they want, and also to be able to articulate it. Yeah, you get bubble in your gut, but you just spit it out of your mouth. Just say. It. Well, and I think something about you too. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. I, I think something about spit out. That's hilarious. Come on. <laughs> I, the last thing I'll say is I think I think what's something about you, Sam, is that you're very you're a confident person as well. Yeah. And unfortunately, when you hear a lot of people talk about relationships in the forum of discussion, there's a lot of insecure people out there, and that's where a lot of this jealousy and a lot jealousy. of these, it comes from insecurity. Yeah, and a lot of these divisions between men and women really come from. Right. So I mean, I think that's a that's a whole other subject, but. Hey guys. Yeah, no, I, you're right. You're right. So, so you uh, your phone. Oh, I, I don't mean to interject, but I just got a couple of hits on Tinder, and I don't see any Adam apples. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna. Have to <laughs> so they all qualify. I, I think so. I'm gonna have to follow up with these girls and see what happens tonight. Well, you do that, and uh, we're gonna wrap here. But Keen Floyd. I love it when you're on stage at Speak. I need to get out and see you on a bigger stage and mangling a larger crowd because it's kind of a different energy. But um, you are a very, very talented comedian. And I love the most, the, the, what I love most about your comedy is the way you write a joke, the way you, Thank you position your punchline. And so I commend you for that. And then you're also an IT guy. I've always been impressed. I think people are generally <laughs> impressed by IT guys. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, the brand of chick, I feel like that will like give it up because you're in IT. Sure. I mean, <laughs> I, uh, I'm fucking, I'm not, uh, <laughs> people assume, people assume, that, 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 I'm like, yeah, I'm a blurred that fucks. I, uh, <laughs> there are a lot of weird guys that have given us a bad name out there. But, uh, yeah, I work in IT in the film industry, visual effect, all that stuff. I also write, do comedy at the same time. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, where are you performing next? I will be performing at the comedy store on July 29th, uh, Denver improv, uh, July 30th through the first, uh, West side comedy, uh, comedy theater in Santa Monica on the mellow comedic show, August 6th, I believe that's the date. <laughs> Good. Um, and then in August. Ontario Improv and uh, Cobb Company Club in San Francisco. You can follow me on Instagram, Matt Keenan J. Floyd, and you can see all the uh, dates that I have coming up. There it is, ladies and gentlemen, right there on the screen. You just saw his handle and his name. You got to look him up. Marvelous. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, Dr. Brian King, we wrote some books that we'd like for people to buy. What book did you write? Hey, uh, is it uh, is it normal? This girl's asking me for my credit card. Is that normal on uh, Tinder? It's been a while. Probably. Today. That's why I'm fuck with that shit. Don't give her your credit card. <laughs> She's. I already gave it to her. Um, oh well. Well, there you go. See? Yeah. I'll see you on Maury. Uh, no, I wrote. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, my current book, or not 
they're all friends. You can buy any of them. But the most recent book is The Art of Taking It Easy. Uh, the uh, Something About Bears and Traffic, I forget the title. Uh, <laughs> the Art of Taking It <laughs> But uh, it's a great book, and it's, it's still doing really well. And uh, I'm just kind of I'm, I'm glad that this one's out there. I, uh, I hope to have a follow-up to it as soon as I can come up with an idea. You know? and, uh, and you're and already working on the next one, right? You're about... I'm trying, and I've got other, I've got all these like irons on the fire, but none of them are getting close to being finished yet. You know, I'm, uh, I don't know what to focus my efforts on. Uh, my, uh, uh, but I know you like, you, you wrote a book that directly pertains to today's subject matter. Uh, oh and I think God. that's something that you should mention, of course. Yeah, I wrote a book called The Complete Player. And this was after having my heart broken and my marriage ended and I felt and ended up falling in love with a, a, a new guy. And uh, six years later, I couldn't tell if the motherfucker gave a shit about me or not. So I walked away and took all my broken heart pieces and poured them out into this book. And this fool is back and I'm listening. I'm listening. So look out for the complete, the complete player two, the second edition. Didn't play it again. Is that what it was, right? Okay. <laughs> Turns no, out. don't get played again. You can you can uh, read the complete player. You can buy the ebook, the paperback on Amazon. Both Brian and our uh, uh, both our books can be found on Amazon. And the complete player really is a very humorous take uh, on the uh, brain science behind sex, love, addiction, and self worth. And so it's quite academic, but very also very funny, very funny read. And, uh, you know, Dr. Brian King uh, tends to write paid turners as well. So I encourage you to go to Amazon and check out our books. Go to Instagram, Twitter, and all the social platforms and follow our guest, Keenan J. Floyd. He's all over the country just rocking these comedy stages. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Yay. Thank you. All right. Well, yeah. So I guess that's it. Thank you. Mad shout out to Samson Krupa for being our producer. You guys, this has been another case. The King and yourself. We out.